Today we're going to be looking at retail workers who got the last laugh. I don't understand why anyone would ever try to have a good retail worker. Keep in mind they're there to help you. But also keep in mind if you annoy them, they can easily ruin your life. What's something you've done to a customer after they've been rude to you? Oh my gosh, you guys, I have been waiting to tell you this story. <laughs> So I used to work as a server at a restaurant in Waikiki, a very busy and touristy location. So you got a lot of customers who were very entitled and privileged up the asshole. So on this particular day, I had already been dealing with a lot of rude customers and I was almost at my tipping point. And one thing about me is that I was a very nice server. I was always kind, but the second you were rude to me or were malicious at all, all rules were off the table. I was gonna serve that energy right back to you. This table had a man and a woman, and from the second they sat down, they did not even acknowledge me. They never once looked me in the eyes. Every time I would come to the table, ask if they needed anything, was taking their order, they never looked at me. They would just say what their order was off into the distance and then expect me to get whatever they needed. Which didn't particularly bother me. I was just like, whatever, they don't want to acknowledge me. But whenever they needed my attention, they would snap, which FYI, never snap at your servers. Even to the point where after I took their order and I asked if they needed anything else, the guy waved me away without even looking at me. <clears throat> so I was already getting really annoyed and when I came to their table to ask if they wanted their check, they didn't say yes, they didn't say no, they just looked at each other and let out a long sigh. So I was like, whatever, f this table, I am over today, I want to go home, I got their check and when I went to their table, <laughs> I didn't even go up to their table, I just took the receipt booklet and threw it across the tables where it clattered across their plates and made a really loud noise to the point that they both looked up gasped and I swear everyone in the restaurant was looking and I was like oh shit. all I could think to myself was there goes my job this is the end I'm gonna get fired so I just kept serving other tables just waiting for the impending firing from my manager that was gonna come and when I finally got to their booklet they tipped me 20 percent what and this just goes to show the rule that I believe every customer service worker should follow. Do not let a customer walk all over you. If you show them that you're not willing to tolerate their bullshit, then sometimes it'll command respect. Or you'll be fired. Who knows? I'm not American, so I don't really understand the tipping situation. I'm pretty sure a 20% tip is quite good. But with them customers, I'll never understand how somebody doesn't have the respect to look in someone else's eyes. I've heard loads of stories about people, you know, working in TV sets and movie sets. And they're basically told not to look in the direction of, like, the actor who's acting. And it's like, why? Like, why am I not allowed to look at them? Like, most of the actors probably want everyone to look at them because they love the attention. But it's actually quite interesting how they were very, very rigid. Snapping their fingers and that, I'm so sorry if they done that to me. I just walk out. I probably would throw a drink over them. But I think it's quite interesting how you knew they were really snappy of you and really rude and then the minute you snapped back and gave them the energy they were giving to you back to them they like treated you well. That's quite weird isn't it? Like it's interesting. But yet again I just don't understand why people are so rude to people who work. Like any job think of it they're literally there to help you. Someone working in Tesco's are there to stack the shelves and probably help you. A waiter you know they're literally there to help you bring you your food ask you what you want to eat. They're literally there to help you. Imagine if waiters weren't there and you literally had to wait in a line and like tell them what you want and that is why you should never be rude to a waiter first of all because they're normal people like us they have feelings they're probably getting underpaid and they don't need to be dealing with rude twats i used to work at a convenience store with the drive thru and i shook people's suitors before giving it to them if they were rude you want to know something that's perfect because technically they can't fire you for that unless they've got you in camera because think of it a bottle of coke you know you don't know it's a 50 50 chance of it exploding in your face i totally would do that like imagine that imagine they're like really rigid and then you proper shake it up now nah, i'm so sorry i would pay to see it explode in their faces people who don't treat people serving them as people can't expect to receive any sort of respect in return exactly treat people how you want to be treated i know it's a good old saying that's the way i am if i'm out and about and i smile at someone they don't smile back i just like glare like i will literally take the smile and just completely get rid of it in front of them just to see how they react i don't understand it that's also another thing that people don't do i know in london it's not really big to be fair in big cities that probably makes sense but in my area if you see some you usually smile say good morning good evening you know bow your head just give like a wee head nod you know basically to show that you're quite friendly i've came across some people who don't Dude, like it's super sore, isn't it? Christmas Eve 2017. I am six months pregnant, waddling my fat ass around the store, and I'm trying to help this woman. And it turns out we don't have in stock what she wants, and she just starts losing her f because we've ruined her Christmas by not having the item in stock. We'd had it since September, she'd just waited till Christmas Eve to get it, but whatever. She even took digs at my unborn child. What? After she left, we realized she'd left behind a bunch of shopping she'd done at other stores. And I could see her. She was still just outside the store. I could have waddled my fat pregnant ass that she'd just insulted out to go give her her bags back. But I didn't. Brilliant. Instead, I took them to centre management that were closing in five minutes time. Which means whatever was in those bags, she didn't get back until Boxing Day. You want to accuse me of ruining Christmas? I'll do it properly. 
Oh my god, I love her. Like, I love her vibe and attitude. But yet again, why is that customer being so difficult? Like, think of it. If she was nice and she would have had her Christmas present for Christmas, now she's literally going to have to go back after Christmas, which is probably the worst thing ever. If you're ever buying a gift for someone, you want to give it to them in a specific day. And if you can't give it to them in that specific day, your day is ruined. Whether that's birthdays, Christmas, you know, like, you want to give it to them on their birthday or Christmas. You don't want to give it to them, like, a few days afterwards. And yet again, if that woman wasn't rude and just act like a nice, normal person, she would have had her presents. Why didn't you just take the food for yourself? Probably because that would end off with her getting fired. But think of it, if she takes it to like the lost and found or whatever place she took it. If the woman doesn't get it in a few days, technically she could take it. Honestly, if I were her, I'd figure out who that woman is and then send her a photo of you eating the food. So Boxing Day is what squints an American. Do Americans not have Boxing Day? I swear everyone done that. This woman's Australian, so I'm assuming people in Australia do it. Maybe it's a thing that countries used to be like ruled by the British Empire do. Basically, Boxing Day is the day after Christmas. So you got Christmas Day and then Boxing Day. What is Boxing Day meant for? It's not like meant to like box people, is it? Why do they call it Boxing? Day. The name comes from a time when the rich used to box up gifts to give to the poor. Okay, well, maybe we should stop Boxing Day if it's literally meant for, like, a day for, like, poor people. Are you taking a mickey? I think I'm gonna have to agree with the Americans in this one. Maybe we should get rid of that day. I work at KFC and if people are super rude to me, before I give them their drinks, I shake them up. Yet again, we got another drink shaker. So, yeah, if you ever do get fast food and your drink randomly explodes in front of you, probably because you've been a bit of a dickhead. This next post is a Reddit post, so I'm gonna pop on with specs. My last glorious day as a Starbucks barista. I used to be a Starbucks barista. We had a woman who would come in every morning and order I you not a double tall vanilla latte with three eighths a pump of vanilla. I have no idea what that is, but that just sounds like diabetes. Not half a pump, three eighths of a pump. Oh my god, that's a bit of a tongue twister. Imagine trying to say that. She even made one of the baristas mark our bottle pump with a sharpie. Every single day, the first cup we would make, no matter who made it, it was always wrong. If you're too sweet or not sweet enough. So after a while, I began to just pretend to make another drink, pull the steam wand, and wave my hands about like a fill behind the machine. I would hand her back the same drink we made for the first time, and it was always perfect perfect the second time, even though it was the same drink. Why do you think that is? In her head, she's probably thinking, oh my god, I made them remake the drink. But like, you literally got the exact same ones. You reckon it's because her brain thinks that it's different. It's kind of like whenever someone's sober and they hang around with like drunk people. Even though they've not been drinking, they become like drunk. Is it like the Pablo effect or something like that? I pronounced it wrong. It's not the Pablo effect. Placebo. Is that how you pronounce it? I'm so bad whenever it comes to speaking. But basically, it's like a psychological thing. So it's like if you're around people who are drinking, you could be sober and drinking water, but because they're drunk, it'll make you think that you're drunk. Does that make sense? I don't know how to describe it. That's basically what's going on here, I think. On my last day of work, this woman decided to come in twice that day. She was being over obnoxious and talking on her cell phone about deals and her assistant and essentially just announcing her importance to everyone in the room. It was 3 p.m. in the spring and the place was filled with teenagers ordering frappuccinos. I had both blenders going and steam ones going. When this woman decided to yell at me, God, I can barely hear myself think, well then walk out. And also, if you're ordering Starbucks and you've got an assistant, why don't you get your assistant to order the Starbucks? I never understand people who do that you know they like announce that they're like rich and famous it's kind of like oh my god my sister yeah just do it blah 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 it's like shut up so i replied funny i can still hear you complaining if you knew me you'd know i have the perfect facial expressions to go with it i look like a snarky little sh I told her I've been handing her back the same drink every morning for over a year too. I said verbatim, kind of embarrassing now that you know, right? Three eights is half a pump of all intents and purposes here, ma'am. She lost it. She demanded my manager fire me on the spot or she'd call corporate and we'd lose her business. Blah, blah, blah. I hated my manager. He was the opposite of a spirit of the rules law kind of person and really enjoyed making our lives more difficult than they needed to be. I knew that firing me actually reflects quite negatively in his quarterly reviews. I knew he wouldn't do it. He told her it was my last day and the best he could do was send me home early, which would be a reward rather than a punishment since the store was so busy. She proceeded to spend the next two hours in a hold with corporate outside. Then when corporate either accidentally hung up on her or told her to shove it, she threw her glasses, called me a little in front of tons of kids and ran to her car to her husband so sorry for that night bro totally my fault well do you want to know something thank god she ran off and why is she on the phone for two hours who cares get your drink turn around and walk out yet again i can never work as barista first of all because it seems really confusing i could not do it and yet again because you have to deal with customers like that i also kind of have anger issues so i feel like i probably end up punching her but do you want to know something fair play to you i bet she looked and felt like a right idiot oh i got y'all so I worked for Starbucks for about seven years before I finally left. And if someone was really, really rude to me, I would do a very minor thing to make their beverage so much better. I know what like it is. Like with frappuccino, I'd blend it with cold brew or other little tips and tricks like that instead of the frapp roast to give them a better tasting drink. Because the next time they go to order their beverage, they're gonna order it the exact same way and they will never get a drink 
as good as they did that one time. They will not know what was wrong with it. They will not know what the difference was. And they will never be able to have a drink that tastes that good ever again. And that makes me satisfied. I'm gonna be completely honest, I'm not good whenever it comes to Starbucks. The only drink I get out of Starbucks is strawberries and cream. I don't drink the Starbucks coffee. So she said she makes them a really good drink, so it means that next time they come, it'll not be as good as the one she made. Or is she being sarcastic? Is she making it really bad? I mean, I'm gonna be completely honest, I was expecting her to be like, yeah, whenever they ask for a caffeinated drink, I give them decaf. So it's like a taste of caffeine, but this doesn't actually give you the caffeine. This is insidious, like you're an evil genius, and this is how your origin story starts. Exactly, I love the fact that she's so evil, isn't she? Say you're passive aggressive with saying you're passive aggressive. I know, like, I'm kind of scared of her. Like, she's kind of evil, but I low-key love it. I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but I kind of have, like, a fear of accidentally being rude. I get so anxious whenever it comes to, like, going into stores. And, like, sometimes I overthink at the back of my head, oh my god, am I being too mean? Because, like, I don't know. It's like, what happens if, like, I'm too pushy? I just want the workers to have a good experience with me, and then I'm sat there literally freaking out, thinking, oh my god, am I being rude? Or am I being nice? You know, I can't actually tell. Sis said upgrade their day, but downgrade their life. So, yeah, I'm assuming she is making them a better drink. But that is evil. Even though they they were rude to you. You make their drink really, really good without them knowing. So it means that whenever they get it again, like it'll never taste exactly the same. I kind of love that. I have kind of a lot of these. So the hotel I worked at was affiliated with a country club and the people that lived in the country club were always the worst customers. And my parents happened to live in that neighborhood country club thing. So I was also a member of said country club. So one day I was at the pool getting my drink on and this lady who would always come into the restaurant and treat me so bad and her children were always horrible. Ugh. saw me but didn't recognize me and was trying to do like a small talk moment with me and then i was like you go to this restaurant all the time right i always see you there and she was like oh my gosh i don't recognize you do you go there too and i was like i actually work there i saw you there last weekend and then she looked super super awkward and goes i didn't think people that worked there could live in this neighborhood and i was like well i do and it's on a lake and my parents house happens to be on the lake and so i go do you live on the water and she goes, no, I'd love to. Me and my husband are saving for a house on the water. And I go, well, I live on the water. You're going to love it when you can afford it. Oh, damn, proper put salt in the wind. I love it. Yet again, that doesn't surprise me that someone who's rich, you know, treats someone who doesn't look rich differently. And I can guarantee you she isn't as rich as how she makes herself out to be. Yet again, it's the fact that she's snobby and her kids are snobby as well. But you do realize, you know, people who have rich parents also can work normal jobs. It's the same as Bill Gates wearing normal clothes. Like, I swear, he literally wears clothes from, like, Walmart. It's like clothes that normal people wear. I feel like sometimes people expect rich people to be super flashy and look rich but it's like nah they just look like normal people you're gonna love it when you can afford it slay her exactly like you can just tell that that oh my god that would have hurt her deep down she's gonna be thinking about that for the rest of her life girl went home and made her husband take a loan out oh my god she probably moved away i'm telling you right now if i was a wannabe rich woman and like really snobby and someone said that to me i moved to a completely new country you knew she was fuming all week now nah, she was fuming all month that would have been such an insecurity of her because a lot of the times women who you know marry men are actually very very insecure about money. It's like obviously they're living off their husband's money but it's like they don't make their own money. So if someone makes a comment like that to them they'll go back to their husband and be like oh my god. You know like they'll start overthinking it and become really insecure. You want to be rude to retail and fast food workers? I'll make your experience slightly worse each time you come in. Very minor pettiness but it's the best way to stay out of trouble. At both of the jobs I've had, floral assistant in grocery store now and former fast food worker, it's very common to get customers who are rude as all get out but aren't rude or violent enough to get reported and banned. While I was working fast food I was often doing drinks, doing bagging and handing the orders all in one. The place I worked had bad managers who refused to work, so I was often left with a lot of jobs. If you were rude to me over the headset, you bet you had a little bit less fries or your drink had a bit too much ice. You become a regular and remain rude. Less napkins, sandwich slightly unwrapped. Nothing major, enough to get in trouble for, but enough to cause annoying. Exactly what you're basically doing is making their experience bad, but not in a bad way. You know, just like annoying where it's like, oh, that's so annoying, but then like deep down, they can't get you fired for that. Now I work as a floral assistant and my rule remains the same. You're rude over a balloon order. Oops, I don't put the stuff in your balloons that make them last more than a day. You come in again, your balloons get blown up smaller. Don't even get me started on flower orders. You're rude to anyone about that and even my manager will say they couldn't get the flowers you wanted. Even if they're sitting in the colour at that instant. And my personal favourite bit of pettiness. If they leave in a half, I make sure to thank them in the most sicky, sweet voice. I can and tell them to come back soon. Yeah, come back again. I'll make your experience even more annoying next time, not to guarantee. This person is so evil and I love them. I just love the way they type that out. It's kind of like an evil person, like a pantomime. It's like, oh, you're going to try and make my life hard. I'll make yours 10 times harder. Well, anyways, guys, that's some retail workers who got the last laugh. Don't mess with retail workers. They're only there to help you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're a Pittsburgh, subscribe and see you all tomorrow for another video.